Back with another crazy discussion here on TYT Sports. Back again. Uh, Back again with the white jeans. <laughs> gonna, we're going to keep it going. We're probably late to the party, but we're going to keep it going. So, we, myself and Jason, had a little bit of fun here. Uh, we spent a lot of time researching this. We took it very seriously. Uh, we are making our NBA soccer starting 11. So, we are using NBA players to make up a soccer starting 11. It's pretty self-explanatory, but let's get to it. Goalkeeper. Jason, you're going to give me your goalkeeper. I'm going to give him mine. Then we're going to go back and forth. And you guys, at the end, will decide which team would well, be most effective on the field, on the pitch, if on we're the being, If we're being honest, I actually made a starting 10. Yes, and Jason. right before the clip, I was like, shit, I so need a goalkeeper. my team would have automatically won. My team is so good defensively, we don't even need a goalkeeper. But who have you got? Uh, if I had to choose a goalkeeper, I think I'm going to go with DeAndre Jordan, just because sheer wingspan, he go, his arms actually go, this is a fact, yep. post to post. That it's like 25 feet. <laughs> is he an eagle? Is he, a, is he like he's a hawk a, of a man? He's a, how far is it from post to post? It's pretty far. There's no way he could go post you to post. You could do box to If box. he did, then he would post be Mr. Stretch. Mr. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. For uh, me, I went, with, I went with Anthony Davis. Um, six foot ten. I think his, his actual one span is seven seven. And his unibrow is His unibrow is eight, intimidating eight. enough. <laughs> That's intimidating enough. Across. But also, the reason why I'd put Davis over Jordan is I think DeAndre Jordan's a little bit more mechanic. Davis is a little bit more nimble, mm -hmm. a little bit more movement to for being a big man. I think he can. One of the things about a goalkeeper that people think, oh, you're tall. No, if someone puts it in the bottom corner, you need to get down there. I think Davis would you be better at doing so. You know what's crazy too is I, I don't know how big Manuel Neuer's hands are, but I can't imagine they're the size of someone like DeAndre Jordan or Anthony Davis. So the gloves alone, on top of your enormous hands, you probably have like. A six foot wingspan, just as they that. can pump. I mean, they can pump, catch a yeah, soccer ball coming at him, probably. Absolutely. Maybe not like a ripper, but they can they can catch it. Uh, a frozen rope, frozen rope to the upper nine. All right, hit me with your uh, defender. All right, Francis. Uh, I wonder if you can pick out what my defensive back four all have in common. But right back, I chose Andre Iguodala. Center back, Kawhi Leonard. Center back, Draymond Green. Draymond Green is the anchor of that defense. Mm -hmm. And le uh, left back, Mike Conley. Francis, do you know what all four of those players have in common? Nope. 2014, 2015, uh, they were all either on or part of the all-NBA defensive first team, right? They also are quick and fast enough. Andre Iguodala is a little bit older, but Andre Iguodala is a poor man's LeBron James. Obviously, LeBron is going to be somewhere in my lineup. I'm not going to tell you where, though. Uh, and does everything LeBron does just a little bit worse, right? Yeah. He's always had that skill set. Kawhi Leonard, <laughs> going to win Defensive Player of the Year this year, likely. Draymond Green, ferocious Ferocious. He's like the Yaya Turi of my defense. He's also, like, he plays bigger than he and is. He's thick. And, of course, Big Mike guy. Conley. Here's the reason for Mike Conley. I need, I know that there's, like, the Messies of the world, right? I mean, granted, against other NBA teams, it would be different. But starting 11th, this was the thought process. You got good, quick, nimble strikers. I thought someone like Mike Conley, who's a good defensive point guard, would somehow be able to just stay in front of these quick Tevez, uh, Neymar, Messi, uh, Bale, Ronaldo-esque people. I can see that, but do you know who your team stands out to me already as? Who? Chelsea. My so team's Chelsea? So defensive. You're just thinking, Jason, the game has evolved. Why is Danny Alves one of the most effective players? Because he bombs forward, he's attacking. You need vision, you need creativity, you need an attacking so mentality. So I'm the 2014, I'm the 2014 Premier, Premier League winners. Oh, okay. But you're the current disasters of the Premier League. Can I get my trophy? My could, team. Could I get my trophy? I've went with an opposite. but I've went with defenders, which I need, but my right back for starters is Tony Parker. He's already French, so he's already witnessed <laughs> the game. But he's got great vision. He's up and down the, the park, I think, better than most. And I think that great he's got the experience history. level, uh, that experience behind him. And I think that he'll be able to distribute the ball well from the back. That's essential. Left back, Tony Allen, at one point, led the first league. First team all defense. First team all defense, <laughs> led the lead in steals. We're going to need him there. Because this is all about tactics, boys. I gave this a, a, big, a big amount of thought. That doesn't make sense because I'm caught up in it. But if your right back goes forward, you need your left back to tuck in. It is the horseshoe movement. I always talk about it in tactics. So if Tony Parker's bombing, bombing forward, Tony Allen. Do you know how players like, don't have a left foot or a right foot? Yeah. And Tony Allen can't score in basketball. They actually leave him open on the three-point line. So therefore, he has no feet. That's what, I mean, he's going to be my defensive fullback. He's, yeah, he's not him. allowed to touch the ball. <laughs> my my centre-backs, I'm going with the Pepe route. I'm going to have DeMarcus Cousins and it's yeah, centre-back. Intimidating, aggressive, aggressive. And then I'm going to have a, a steady head who has overcame adversity to be able to read the game in Paul George. Because he's proven that he can come back from severe adversity, some physicality that obviously is durable because you see him coming back from his leg bending underneath him. And I think he's a smart player. I think he'll be able to keep DeMarcus Cousins straight and narrow, but also bring out that aggressive side to him. So Averages about four turnovers a game, though. 
I know, but I, I just I trust him. I trust he said ahead. All right, so I'm going to go on to my midfield before I throw it back to you. And the reason why, I can't believe you get Kawhi Leonard at centre-back. That guy is a born defensive midfielder. He is the Nemanja well, Matic well, in, well, in prime. He is going to... Kawhi. He's going to protect that back four. He's going to be like a crab, just going side to side, defending, you haven't used not the, letting you anyone... You haven't used the crab reference in like a year. Back back. He's going to go side to side. Kawhi Leonard, defending. All right, so and you know what you need? Do you know what you're allowed to do if you get Kawhi Leonard at centre-back? At centre defence mid, you're allowed to have creativity in front of you. And by you creativity, okay. I also mean I'm going to throw it back. I'm, I'm going to break the rules. I'm going to bring in Steve Nash, even if he has retired. As my I thought you were going to bring in Steve. I, I realised you know that too. Steve Nash could have played football. There's, this, there's the talks about him. We've seen him uh, keep up oh, the ball. Yeah, of course the and by the way, I'm going with a 4-3-2-1. Um, a That's why. So just to let you know, just in case you were wondering. I'm doing a 4 3, three. So I'm going to go with... Kawhi Leonard in there with Steve Nash beside him. And then you know who's just in front of them? John Wall. Oh, I have John Wall too, but I have him in a different so, place. So creative. I have him in a different place. Moves around, right? Give me your center mids before I move on to my wings. My mids, uh, I have a, a two distributors in my midfield, two of the best passers in the entirety of the NBA mm -hmm. playing in my midfield. Chris Paul. Yeah. Oh, man. High IQ, man. That's going to kill me. That, I guy can CP3. <laughs> that guy can play any sport, any position, and just be smarter than everybody else. An interesting choice. But someone who's not allowed to shoot would be Rajon Rondo. Supreme court vision. Uh, he was, he was in a list, I see. midfield vision. A little aged, though. And then in the center of it all, I needed somebody who was uh, physically stronger than everybody else, who has range, who can attack, who can also play defense and kind of run everywhere on the field, and that's the, one of the greatest born athletes of all time. That's LeBron James. Very good choice. And I... Have LeBron, but I'm not going to tell you where until the very end. Well, obviously, that probably gives that away. <laughs> yes. Right, but it's not, as I mentioned, 4 3 2 1. So I've mentioned my three midfielders now. It's the two wide players who are going to have such an influence going forward, if you know this formation. On the right hand side, Russell Westbrook. Direct, I have Westbrook strong, too, no. fast, going to get in behind the defenders. And of course, on the left hand side of it, able to cut in onto his right foot. So I know his right hand is very gifted. I'm sure his right foot is just as gifted. Steph Curry. I feel like he would try to dunk it into the back of the net by just running full speed into the net. Who? Russell, Russell Westbrook. Westbrook. Oh, but and then that's moved all to the left side of it, cutting in on the right. It's going to be Steph Curry. I have Steph. So we have similar guys just in different places. So who do you, who's your midfield? It's Steph Curry, Russell so, Westbrook. So far, else? yeah, so Kawhi Leonard defensive, two center mids, John Wall and uh, Steve Nash, right uh, attacking mid, Westbrook, left attacking mid, Steph Curry, which leaves only one player to anchor my front LeBron James. LeBron James. Dominant. Yeah. Athletic. Powerhouse, intimidating, good head on his shoulders. Francis, what was Carlos Tevez's nickname in his prime? I don't know. What was Wasn't he called? Wasn't he a, called a pit bull? Pit bull. He's also called a pit bull, yeah. Do you know who's kind of like a pit bull in the NBA? That would be Russell Westbrook. I was going to say, he is. Russell Westbrook is my front attacking So what's your formation man. you're playing? 4-3-3. Three, three. We're going to oh, go very, very nice. balanced. Very okay. balanced. Did Chelsea do that? Nope. Yeah, so who, go fuck yourself. <laughs> I am not Chelsea. <laughs> uh, so I have John Wall on the left wing. Pure. And John Wall, right when he came out of college, when he could run the, the NBA court in, like, I don't know, half a millisecond. Mm -hmm. So this guy's fast. Burst of speed, quick burst of speed, making insane runs because he can get past his man. Who, who's your terrible back for? Who do you have in your... I've got Tony Parker, Tony, oh, Tony Allen, Parker DeMarcus, versus John Marcus Wall. is going to eat him. Tony Parker is, like, he's 58 years old. <laughs> he's too slow. He's going to fall on his ass. He's got, like, three divorces. He can't, he can't handle John Wall. Can't jump ball. Steph Curry on the right wing, Russell Westbrook in the uh, in the center. Steph Curry on the right, just because range. So you've got Westbrook. He's Forty your yards out, ping. Westbrook. So I get it. Westbrook's your Tevez. He's your front man. Westbrook's with height best. alone. I think Demarcus Cousins snuffs him out in my team. Yeah, but you could say that about look at Messi, and Neymar, Suarez are tiny. Well, Suarez isn't tiny. No, but, but I, I I do like what what you went with. I like that you went with the four three three. I went with the go to four two three one. But so Steph is going to play on your on your left, or on your right. Right. See, that's what I figured. I, I, Steph does so well being able to cut his angles and utilize his shooting hand. I think in the whoever football, your you right back inside. is, whoever your right back is, is going to get nutmegged a hundred times, a <laughs> hundred times a year. I wish there's some way for us to do this in FIFA. Please create this FIFA somehow to allow us to put basketball players into it. Like but use their hands, hand yeah. ball. <laughs> It'd be great to see it. But there you go. And well, did you get any honorable mentions? I got four subs. Oh my goodness, I've got two. I had I had subs, but no goalkeeper. Uh, I have four subs, and there's very specific reasons. Pau Gasol's in there. Uh, we call it portability. Another high IQ player. Maybe Spanish. like a knows, maybe like a Bastian Schweinsteiger comes in like the 60th minute, plays 30. I like that. I'm not sure where though. Kyrie Irving because he's shifty. Good. Damian Lillard because he's a fucking NBA All Star. 
and uh, James Harden because he is great at flopping. Therefore, we're going to get a lot of penalties in the box. <laughs> Good point. Good point on James Harden. But I'm going to go back to your previous mention, Damian Lillard. And I thought about this tactically. Steve Nash, he's not got the legs anymore. He's going to have to come out at one point. Lillard and then what's going to happen? I'm going to shift to a 4 4 2. Damian I'm Lillard. Drop... Lillard? No, uh, yeah, I'm going, to have... I'm going to go with the little and large, the crouch to foe. Partnership Ooh. up there. Look, Crouch and Defoe is a partnership where Crouch is like six, seven, six, eight. Defoe's tiny. They part. played very well together. That's LeBron and Damian Lillard. They're going to form a new partnership. They're going to be dominant. Damian Lillard's very shifty to play off LeBron. Hold it into his feet. Distribute wide. And then we're going to get the goals. He's going to come on 75th minute. Put you to Who's bed. Who's your coach? Who's My your coach manager? is going to be... Um, I, was going to, I was going to go with the standard pop, but I think you're probably going to go with pop. So I'm going to go no. with... I'll go, I went with David Blatt. I'm going to bring Phil Jackson back from, from his general manager. From his general I'm manager, gonna, I'm going to put him straight in because he needs to coach this whole stuff. I'm going to take Doc Rivers so he can say, it's not Rondo's fault. <laughs> it's not on Rondo. Stop playing stuff. He's not on your team, Doc. I'm going to steal Nelly's fault. It's not his fault. It's not <laughs> on. All right. Well, you know, some fun here. I want the comments. Can't wait for the commenters to be like, you guys are idiots. There's the 11 players that would dominate in soccer. I didn't even have Draymond Green. I should have had him in You there. need Draymond be, Green. He could be a sub for me. I think he can come in when DeMarcus gets a little heated. I mean, no, there's no Kobe. Out. I mean, nah, there's no, no Larry, novelty factor Larry Bird. I'm not bringing in some sentimental No player. MJ. My team is trying to win. Hakeem Olajuwon would have been an amazing choice because he grew up playing soccer well, I, know, I never thought about All-Stars. The reason I brought Steve Nash in is because he's just an exception. Well, Steve Nash also, if you ever see the dunk contest, he does all the crazy awesome tricks. Yes, he does. Well, that's it from, the, from the, the steno to... book. The comments can comment below on their <laughs> NBA starting 11. Uh, for the soccer ball, we need your goalkeeper. We need your, your 10 men, your back four, your midfield, your attacking line. And we need some subs, okay? We need a full squad here. Do not cheat us. We will know. I see this clip breaking 100K. I see this just surfacing and people just... Yeah, just like my front attack in three breaking 100,000 goals. Am I right?